hello, I'm Steve with BWS, and uh, I check out the forklifts in the morning to make sure that they are working properly. And uh, each morning I get here about 6.30, and our day shift starts around 7, so that gives me about a half hour to get all the equipment checked in, uh, all the forklifts, pallet jacks, and stretch wrap machines. So as I approach a forklift, I usually try to approach it from the right hand side if it's not too close to a rack. And the first thing I look for is the bolts and the mast to make sure that they are installed because you know how loose they can get if they're not in there and then you wind up bending something if they're not in place. Look for side damage on the panel. We've got a little dip right here but it's not bad. I have seen them before where they're actually bashed way in. Look at the tires on this side. Walk around the back side and make sure the fire extinguisher is here. Make sure the pin is in here also. I find a lot of times this, this pin is missing. And then I'll glance at the needle on the gauge to make sure that it's in the green zone. Uh, the other thing I'll check is make sure the operator's manual is in the seat as it's supposed to be. Uh, sometimes I'll find guys will take this out and they'll actually put other paperwork in there. Walk around on this side, look at the tires once again, look at the side panel, look at the bolts that are in the mass, make sure they're in place. Then I'll get on the machine, turn on the key. The first thing I do is I notice that the strobe light is actually working like it should. Raise it up. As I'm raising, I'm watching the chains. I'm checking the chains, I'm checking the wheels, I'm checking the hose sheaves to make sure everything is turning. Raise it up to where your second stage cylinders actually take off. That way you've activated all of the cylinders, you've activated all of the oil flow that needs to be. And as it's up here about this height, I will side shift it all the way from one side to the other. The, these lower these lower jaws that are right here that are bolted on, if those are not adjusted properly, your uh, forklift will get into a bind whenever you try to side shift with a heavy load on there. Always just kind of visually look at that to make sure that they're in place and they're adjusted correctly. Put the side shift back all the way into the center of the machine. Tilt it all the way back. Tilt it forward to make sure it levels out. Go all the way forward again to make sure it activates all the way extended. Lower it down. Again, as it's lowering down, I'm still watching hoses and wheels to make sure everything is turning properly. And then I'll drive the machine. Take the parking brake off. I usually like to go backwards first. And the reason is, in case there's an oil leak on the forklift, whether it's hydraulic or the drive axle, as I back away, I'm going to see an oil spot sitting there. So I always like to back up, back up first. Now look on the ground. Keep them clean is one of the most important things. Uh, we all know how batteries can get greasy on top, how they can get the corrosion on top. 
uh, that all needs to be washed off. Uh, there's actually uh, electricity that will flow on top of the battery. If you check with the meter, if the battery is real dirty and uh, it needs to be washed off and cleaned as best as, as it can be. The other thing is uh, having two batteries per forklift. Uh, it's the easiest way. I keep my batteries numbered. They, they match the number that's on the forklift. For example, this is forklift number eight. I'll put a number eight on this battery. On the other battery that goes with this, I'll put an 8A. Or I might have 8A, 8B. Uh, that way it always matches the forklift. It's easier than trying to use the unit number of the forklift. Uh, these are too many numbers to keep track of. It's easier for just a single number to be on there. Uh, if you only have uh, two batteries with each forklift, uh, you, you only need one charger and that one charger needs to stay with that battery with that forklift because if there's ever a problem with your battery not charging or your charger not charging or your, your forklift is not uh, lasting very long, it's a lot easier to track it down by knowing what the problem is uh, with one of the three units. If you use a, a random charger you never do know what the problem may be. This way you always can focus on one area. So keep two batteries with one charger at all times. Plug the battery in. We've had some some of the new guys that come in. Uh, our safety coordinator, Gary, he, he, he goes over with them, uh, trains them to, to drive our forklifts, to drive our pallet jacks. Um, there's some things that I'll go over with some of the new guys I'll ask them, you know, did, did Gary show you this, did Gary show you that? And sometimes there's some things that I can pick up on that he actually misses. Uh, the changing out battery is another important thing. Uh, Gary will take them back there and show them how to change the battery. I'll actually bring a forklift back there or a pallet jack and we'll go through the steps. I'll make them do it uh, as I'm there coaching them. I never do expect a new employee to learn it all at one time. It's a lot of information to soak in at once. But um, uh, I always tell them I'll come back there and coach them uh, for two or three times. Well, they can get a, another employee that's been here for a long time and knows what they're doing. One of the new things, uh, one of the problems that we have with new employees is forgetting to plug in your battery. Uh, even some of our guys that have been here several years, every now and then I'll catch that. But I generally know who drives what forklift each day. And uh, if I go back to the battery chargers and I find the battery's not plugged in, I'll plug it in for them. I'll go find that person and say, hey, you forgot to plug in your battery. And I tell each employee this every time when they first start their very first day, this is what I tell them. The first time you forget to do it, that's strike one. I'll do it for you. I'm going to come tell you. The second time you do it, if I see that it's not plugged in, I'm going to come find you and you have to go back there and plug it in. The third time is strike three, whenever I see that it's not plugged in, I'll get on the radio and say, hey, who's driving forklift number eight this morning? You didn't plug in your battery. And this way it kind of embarrasses everybody, especially that person, because everybody comes up to them and go, ah, oh, you got in trouble. Steve caught you for not plugging in your battery this morning. And uh, it helps them to not forget for the next time. It's very useful. I've learned over the years. It's a very, very power powerful tool to use a simple walkie-talkie. So that is probably uh, one of the most important things is charging your battery fully. Whenever the battery is, yeah, you, you need to drain it down all the way. Like on these Toyotas, you have the flashing bars that are all the way to the left. Um, you get to two flashing bars, keep using the forklift. You get down to one flashing bar, that's fine. Go ahead and change it out. But with anything that's rechargeable, you need to empty the battery. You need to fill it completely up whenever you charge it. And that means with charge. And only put water in there after it's charged. As long as the lid plates are covered on the inside, that's all you need. Uh, to charge it and then once it's charged then you fill it up with water otherwise you're going to boil the water out of the battery as it's charging. Now Steve I have a question I know some videos some trainers and some manuals 
say that you do water before and after? Some of the videos that we have seen say you do water before and after. That's whenever you add water by hand, taking off each individual cap and putting water in there, as long as the water is above the lead plates. Whenever you take the cap off and you look down in there, you can see a whole bunch of lead plates that are side by side. As long as they are covered with water, you're safe. That's all it needs. Because if, if it's below that level and while it's charging, the lead plates will get very hot and it can ruin the battery eventually. So you can add water beforehand, cover the lead plates only, charge the battery completely, then come back and top it off with water. Okay. Any other questions? That's it for now, sir. Thank you very much. All right. We're going to do a little quick run through of the inspection that I do each morning on the pallet jacks, the forklifts, and the switch track machines. So whenever I approach a pallet jack in the morning, the first thing I do is I visually look at everything. I'll, I'll walk around the side and make sure there's no damage. And then I'll come around to the other side, make sure there's no damage on either side. Also check the latch. I've noticed before sometimes the latch is not fully engaged or they'll catch this hinge and they'll bend that plate down there so then the latch does not work good. Once all checks out well, turn on the key, on it, raise it up and make sure that the limit switch operates correctly by going all the way up and let it stop by itself. Just like that. Raise it all the way up. Once, once you know that works correctly, lower it down with the same button, hit the horn button, check the brake, drive it backwards and check the brake. Brake's a little weak on this one. Once you check the brakes, both directions, because sometimes I've noticed brakes don't work as well in one direction as they do in the other, although they should. Usually that's an indication of dust in the brake drum. Then you want to make sure that it plugs by turning your handle back the other direction. Turn the handle back. Hit the emergency stop button. And then allow it to stop by itself. Once you do all those, check the horn here. Check the up and down button on this end. My final thing is to step off of it, run it. Let's stop by itself. Check the hours on it. Lower it down, cut the key off. When we're done, I uh, write down the hours on uh, my clipboard each morning of all those items that I've just checked and move on to the next one. And this is part of checking in the stretch up machines each morning as well. Naturally, it's always left on. The first thing I do is hit the up button, make sure that the carriage rises as it should. Then grab the film, hit the film assist button, and pull on it to make sure that it comes out as it should so you can attach it to your load. Hit the jog button, make sure the turntable actually turns as it should. Once you know all those things operate, Cut it off, make sure the emergency stop button does its job of shutting down in case there's ever an emergency. Turn the machine back on. Hit the home button for the other thing to go back home. Then I like to do this. I'll stand on the turntable, go all the way around, feeling for any bearings that may be going bad, feeling for any dragging. It's an easy way of checking instead of actually taking the plate, the turntable completely off. If you, if, by doing this, you're putting all your weight in one spot on the turntable, allowing it to really press down on the bearings and all the rollers that are underneath. And if any of them are dragging or there's any um, wood shoved underneath there, you will feel that in your feet. All right, first thing we want to do is hit roll carriage up. This way you're, you're operating the roll carriage to make sure that it actually rises as it should. Next thing you want to do is grab the film, 
hit the film assist button. Make sure the film comes out as it should, so you can attach it to your load. This way you're turning on the next motor underneath there. You're operating the rollers and the chains that are underneath this cover to make sure everything is in place. The next thing you want to do is hit the jog button. This indicates that the turntable actually turns. So now we have activated all of the motors that are in this machine. Hit the stop button. You, you want to make sure that the emergency stop button works. If you don't use it over a period of time, it could even clog up the dust in there. Turn it back on. And then now we're going to hit the home button. Hit the home button. Everything goes back home to where it originally is for starting position. All right. Thank you very much. Here we are at the battery charging station and I uh, just wanted to give a quick overview of how we change our batteries over here for our forklifts and our pallet bags. Uh, as you can see we have our trolley that runs uh, along the wall and all it does is go straight back and forth and it runs on a track on the side next to the wall. Out here is open. As long as there's nothing laying here on the ground everything works fine. Uh, sometimes you might see a board or a piece of plastic going over here, so you gotta kick it out of the way. Um, right now we turn off the exhaust fan that's over there behind the batteries uh, for noise purposes so we can do this. But having the exhaust fan on is very important while the batteries are actually charging because they expel uh, gas. The gas needs to be exhausted out of the building, otherwise it'll collect in here. Uh, the first thing we do when we come in with a forklift. Uh, we back up, mark right here in the center, that open hole that's right there where the voice is hanging right now. That open hole is always left there. That's where you unload your discharge battery. And let it sit there while you pick up your charge battery, whichever forklift you were driving. As I said in another video, each battery is, uh, has a number on it. These numbers match each forklift. Each forklift has two batteries. One is in forklift right now. Here's the other battery for each forklift. Each one's being charged. Right above these batteries, actually wrote it on here. Here's where the pin, what number goes, so it's always in the right spot. The numbers that are on the chargers actually match our breaker, so I can find them in our breaker panel. Uh, always put water in the battery before you put it into your forklift. Make sure it's full. We have a watering system on each of our batteries here and it works very well for us. The watering cats need to be checked on a regular basis uh, to make sure that they are putting the water into the battery as they should. The little floats that are on the battery sometimes will be clogged, uh, sometimes they'll break and they, they need to be actually taken off and looked inside to make sure that it's putting water in there as it should. As you notice over here, our PPE is hanging right here. Uh, you always want to make sure that you wear a face shield to protect your face and also a apron as well. And I had some of the guys complaining that it's too hard to tie the apron in the back. So I put a ring on one side and a snap on the other side. So all they got to do snap it together behind the back and have to worry about tying it in the knot. And it makes it a lot easier for the guys to wear it and some of the guys are complaining about even putting it on. But it does make it a lot easier. A hoist, basically up and down, side to side. Put your battery in, take it out. Um, again, with using that hoist, each battery weighs 2,000 pounds. You don't get your foot underneath it. Make sure the hook is all the way in the eyelet on each battery uh, so you don't drop it on your foot. You get someone else hurt, drop it on the equipment, make sure it's in there securely. I always tell my guys, once you get it hooked in there, you look at it three times before you actually lift it up. Don't just, don't, don't just get it hooked on there and turn and start talking to somebody else. Always watch what you're doing. Uh, I tell everybody, don't get in a hurry. 
make sure you can see everything, make sure you're doing it safely. Uh, we have had it happen here twice, one time on days and one time on nights, where they didn't have the hook in there all the way, they just had it on the lip. The bagger actually fell on the floor, and it didn't hurt anybody, it just fell straight down. The other time they were halfway onto the platform over there, and it hit the edge of the platform and it dumped over onto the side. So naturally what happens, your acid comes out of your battery and makes a big mess. So safety is a very big issue. Uh, watch what you're doing.